<laughs> Welcome to Bet On It, powered by Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas on Twitter. Successful week last week outside of, uh, well, that nasty sandwich Marco made me eat. First time I gave him some uh, love on Twitter, and look what happens. At least we didn't get Cristobal, right? Joe Ranieri at Joe Ranieri on Twitter. Marco D'Angelo at Marco in Vegas. Sorry, Marco, I had to throw some shots out there because I finally had a very good weekend in college football and NFL, and you had a minor setback, but still very successful weekend. Marco, let everybody know how your weekend was outside of our good friend Mario. Yeah, well, we hit our best bet here on the show, guys, and I think we lost the first uh, one of the season, and since then it's been nothing but uh, winners with our best bet, and they've been all blowouts, so let's keep that trend rolling along. Premium uh, clients, they had a 5-1 and one uh, college football week last uh, last Saturday and Thursday night we had a play. So it's been good on that aspect in 9-3 uh, and three in college football for the month of October so far. And I'm this type of handicapper, Kelly, that I get better as the season goes on because I got more stats to work with and we got more situational stuff to work with with big games coming off them, looking ahead and all of that kind of stuff. So Looking forward to this weekend. Got some good games for sure. There is some good games we'll get into here in a minute. And we'll also get into some of those situations with Ralph Michaels later on in the show. Joe Ranieri, uh, did you end up getting Cristobal? Because I have a confession. I was at my dad's house, um, was having a great day. Brett looks over and he goes, I'm going to play Miami. I'm like, all right, it's it's the right side, right? Like, well, we got to do this. And instead, I get Cristobal, I go to bed, Colorado State's down at half, I wake up at 3 a.m., see this epic comeback, and Hawaii couldn't quite get it done, almost cashed the parlay, would have been awesome, but I have to know, did you take the points with Miami? Yeah, no, it's funny, because I happened to get a uh, a late text before uh, kickoff from uh, one Adam Trigger that uh, sucked me right off get him into, uh, into jumping in and uh, against my better judgment. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no. I knew the minute they fumbled it on the half-yard line in the first half that we were pretty much screwed from that point. But the good news is we got Missouri. My Oklahoma State Cowboys uh, pulled out the outright upset. And uh, Tulane handled business. So last week was uh, it was a good one here on the show across the board. Yeah, you love to see it. I also hit my best bet to wrap things up with Pittsburgh. So nice of them to make that one easy on me with the outright winner. We'll get to some more outright winners in the Barking Dog segment. But first, we got to do some big game breakdown Saturday, Fox 12 Eastern. Penn State, this one's on the move, at least as far as the total goes at Ohio State. 45 and a half. This one's come down on the Wager Talk odd screen since its opening. Penn State plus four and a half. Larko, you and I were talking about this before the show started. I want to like Penn State. Thurston and I have Penn State in our college football wins pool. And uh, I'd love to see them get an outright win here. But I feel like they're kind of the dog with fleas this week. Well, definitely they could end up, Kelly, being that popular dog, as we always say you know, the square dog, so to speak. But, you know, the total coming down is no surprise because if you look at the data, you're looking at the two best defenses in college football. The problem is we just don't know how good these teams really are, especially Penn State, because they haven't played anybody yet. They haven't played an offense that puts fear into anybody yet. So we'll see what happens on Saturday. Now, you, we say it on the show all the time, and I want to say it. These TV games, we're bringing you the biggest games of the week. And sometimes we've got a strong opinion on it. Sometimes not so much. And I'm going to be honest. This is one of those ones where I don't have a strong opinion. I am going to lean to Penn State in this game. Why? I saw Ohio State in the one test that they had. They went to South Bend. And they struggled with a Notre Dame team. Now, we've seen Notre Dame, they started the season out great, but we saw in the last few weeks that they were human, except last week when they steamrolled USC, who doesn't play any defense. If Penn State can run the football in this game, they stay in this game the whole way. They haven't been tested yet. They haven't been in a dogfight. We'll see what happens when it's a tight game in the fourth quarter. But I'm going to go ahead, take Penn State, plus the points for the show here. I see this coming down to the final possession of the game. 
I've got Penn State winning 24-23. And I would love to see Penn State stay undefeated, Kelly, uh, because in a couple weeks I'm going to be at Happy Valley for the Michigan game. It'll be my first trip to uh, Happy Valley. So I'd like to see two undefeated teams going into that one. Yeah, that does sound awesome. Joe, here's something interesting. So as uh, some of you may know, we own the gold sheet as well here over at Wager Talk, and they post a lot of really great information each and every week over at goldsheet.com. Penn State, Ohio State, Joe, 61.7 points per game on average in the last six meetings. Yet this line just keeps dropping as far as the total here. I know these defenses are both very good. But as Marco said, neither one of them has really faced in high-octane offense. Am I crazy to go against the uh, number here and take the over? I, I, mean, I hate this game on so many levels just because there's no there's there's so much unknown. First of all, we have a whole lot of health issues with Ohio State with impactful players, right? Wide receivers, um, questionable. Henderson still questionable. Wasn't in that Purdue game. Uh, Denzel Burke, they're starting uh, their shutdown corner for Ohio State. He's still questionable. So there's a lot of we don't still know health-wise of this Ohio State team. And I think Marco nailed it with Penn State. I think the three of us would be considered the number one offense if uh, if all we played were, uh, I mean, look at these teams here, guys. Let's go over the list here of who they have played. Uh, Iowa, what a hell of an offense there. Uh, UMass, woo! Northwestern, uh, Illinois, uh, West Delaware. I mean, come on. Who in the hell has Penn State even come close to playing? Say what you want about Ohio State. At least they have been, they have played some teams that are at least a step above what Penn State has. So I know how good Ohio State's defense can be. I know their coordinator is one of the best in the country. I don't know what Penn State is, and I don't know that Ohio State's offense is good enough with that quarterback in order to be able to take advantage of them. So I think there's so much unknown in this game. It drives me crazy. I think we'll learn a little something about each of these when it's all said and done. I leaned under in this one, certainly in the first half, because I do think it might be a little sloppy early on. Uh, But now that it's dropped to 45, 45 and a half, uh, I would just wait to see... First of all, who's playing and what are the conditions going to be by kickoff? You might be surprised, Gal. Maybe this number does start to creep up uh, just before kickoff. Yeah, Ohio State has won the last six meetings. Penn State has covered the spread in five of those and covered 13 straight games. I never thought we'd see that from James Franklin, but yet Mm. we have. He is on a nice ATS run that I'm not sure I want to step in front of. Saturday, CBS, 3.30 Eastern, Tennessee, eight and a half point underdogs at Alabama. Let me pull up the wager talk on screen because I want to make sure this total hasn't really moved that much either. Thought we'd see a little more action in this one. Uh, actually, we are. The nines are popping up. Under money's coming in. Uh, 48 and a half is the current pretty much consensus on the wager talk on screen. And I thought that might be what we'd see. We talked about we not knowing maybe what Ohio State's identity was. I still have no idea who Alabama's identity is, Joe Ranieri. Do you have any inclination? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, do you? Let's hear it. I'd love to hear your synopsis. Yeah. yeah. Sloppy as ass. That's what this Alabama team is. They win ugly. They don't impose their will like they have in years past. I mean, how many? They're still waiting for that one game where they're up 35-7 to seven at the break, and then they... You know, they sit back in the second half and don't let anything happen. They haven't had the luxury of doing that this year because the offense has been slow out of the gate. Uh, They didn't know what to do with Milrow to begin with. They were still rotating quarterbacks the first couple of games of the year. Uh, So they've had some issues. They have figured it out a little bit better along the way offensively. But defensively, they are better right now than they are offensively. And they are at home. And they have revenge on their mind here don't forget that and Tennessee really thought they wouldn't skip a beat from the Hendon Hooker days once they brought Joe Milton over and handed the reins over to him but the reality is Joe Milton is one of the single worst 
uh, certainly from a passer rating quarterbacks in the country. And that's not great when you talk about a Josh Heupel offense that likes to run 30,000 plays in a five minute uh, in a five minute period. A lot of three and outs, uh, a lot of not being able to move the chains. He's not accurate. They have not taken advantage like we thought they might. The defense has maybe been the most um, the best part of this Tennessee team that nobody's talking about here this year. So we saw the total open up 46 and a half, 47. We've seen it get up to what, 49 now, 49 and a half. And when people look at what the score of this game was last year, uh, boy, oh boy, they couldn't wait to run and bet the over. They thought it was way too low, but I'm not sure right now. I mean, Alabama may have allowed Arkansas to get back into that game last week. But they held the Razorbacks to 250 yards, 4 of 14 on third down. That is, we're starting to see much closer to what we expected from the defense of Alabama. The offense is a little slow to get there, and I do not trust this Tennessee offense against elite competition defensively. We saw what they did against Texas uh, A&M. We have seen them struggle to put points on the board. Let's not forget, uh, I believe this is only their second true road game here this year, too. They went to Florida, and that didn't work out. What they score? 20 points there, I think. So this is not an offense I trust. I happen to trust both defenses more. So I would look in the total in this aspect and say, give me the full game under, or at the very least, expect this to be a little sloppy early on, too. I would even go with the first half under in this one. Marco, I'd have to agree with Joe here. Alabama, lucky to win a couple of those games on the back mm. of their defense. I want to like the Vols here. Trust me, I know. Mm. You cannot quantify revenge. We talk about it all the time here on the show. But don't be mistaken. I guarantee Alabama has revenge on their minds. I made this game seven and a half. So at nine, while there's not a ton of value in that point and a half, it kind of points me towards the Vols. Do you agree with me? Or is this just going to be another stay away game and you're going to cheer for neither team? <laughs> I'm, trying to think, I'm trying to think if there's a game you were going to go to that you had some <laughs> logical reason why you wanted one to be undefeated, but that's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. And I actually do feel stronger in this game uh, than I did the first game that we talked about. And Kelly, you know, the revenge thing, yeah, that's overused all the time. But we talk about teams, you know, whenever it's playoff revenge or end your season, something like that. But when you're in a program like Alabama that maybe only loses one game or two games at most or in the season, you do have a tendency to remember those games. And especially the way that game went last year, you know, the up and down the field, the 52 to 49 uh, barn burner and then the knuckle field goal that went through at the end of the game. Uh it, they definitely remember that one. But I'm looking at this one, and I know that Alabama has on more occasions looked really mediocre, barely getting by some teams. And last week was a case in point. 19-point uh, favorite, they only score 24 points, only win by three points against Arkansas, a team that at times has looked decent and other times has looked downright awful this season. I think they got caught looking ahead here. I think they had one eye down the road to Tennessee this week, and I'm going to go ahead and back Alabama here and lay this one as long as I'm laying single digits. Uh, we've seen the line creep up a little bit. But what Joe said about the Alabama defense and Tennessee's problems throwing the football, if Tennessee has to rely solely on their running game, they're going to be in trouble in this one. And if you look at what Alabama's done in their last three games to teams that are trying to throw the ball against them, uh, Mississippi State was only 15 of 27 for 107 yards. Uh, Texas A&M, 14 of 25, 239. And last week, Arkansas, only 14 of 24 for a buck 50. Those kind of numbers uh, are strong for this Alabama defense. And I think they make Tennessee be a one-dimensional team, and that's going to spell the end of it for Tennessee in this one. I'm going to lay the points in that Alabama offense, although they're not getting a high percentage of completions, they're making them count. Three game, or You look at their last three games, they had a 10-completion game, but 238 yards. 21 completion game, 321, and another 10 completion yard, uh, or 10 completions for 164 yards. 
they're getting high average on those pass plays that they are completing. Let's go Alabama. Get on track this week. I've got them winning 31-20. to 20. I'll lay the eight and a half, nine points. That might be just enough to keep me off the Vols. They were on my long list, but man, the more I start to look at this team, I'm not sure they can go into Tuscaloosa and get the mm-hmm. outright win, let alone the cover. All right, these glasses only mean one thing, and that means it's time for some TNA with the stat daddy himself. Ralph Michaels, ready to give us some college football streakers, a nerd chart, and then five trends, angles, slash systems for college football week eight. Ralph, where has the time gone? Isn't it crazy, Kelly? We're October 18th, and uh, we have a bunch of meaningful games, so it's very exciting to talk about. And I'll tell you what. I tweeted out this morning, Kelly, I was looking at my son's streakers page going back to 2006 Vanderbilt now with eight straight overs. There's only been seven or nine teams since 2006 that have gone eight straight overs any time in a season, let alone the first eight games of the season. Yeah, it's just wild. Jeff uh, posted his streakers for college football Monday on the Wager Talk Instagram, and I was looking at it going, you know, some of us are a little stubborn and keep thinking that we're going to buck these trends, but they just keep on cashing. So something to keep an eye on for this week. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the streakers page. This list streaks of at least four games or more. And if there is a push inside, you see there's an asterisk. But there are 44 teams, Kelly, that either have an ATS streak of four or more, an ATS losing streak of four or more, an over a four or more, and an under a four or more. Jeff's Twitter is JM Sports CLE, and I also include this in the free Bet On It TNA guide. But just a couple of the highlights teams with six straight ATS wins Miami of Ohio, Oklahoma, Penn State, UNLV, and Oregon. Five straight ATS losses. California, Miss State, Southern Miss, and Toledo. Vanderbilt, eight straight overs, which is amazing. LSU, all offense, no defense, seven straight overs. And unders, Syracuse, six straight unders. Troy and Tulane, five straight unders as well. And if you guys watch the NFL segment, guess what? We now have an NFL streakers each week as well. Yes, and you can also get that on the Wager Talk Instagram at Wager Talk. Ralph, before we get into your nerd chart, I'd like you to let everybody know what incredible special we have going on over at Wager Talk. Well, it happens once, maybe twice, at tops three times a year. A 30-day all-access, all-sport package is $2.99. That breaks down to under $10 a day. Well, we have our very special $199 package. That's 30 days of college football, NFL, NHL. The NBA starts next week. College basketball starts in a few weeks, plus baseball, UFC, and soccer. I'll tell you what, this is an incredible week to get the $199 special. I have a college football 5% play going on Saturday, an NFL 5% play on Sunday, and you can get 30 days of all my selections or any capper at Wager Talk for just $199. No coupon needed. Just go to your favorite handicapper's homepage. Awesome stuff. Ralph, give me that nerd chart. I got to find out if it coincides with one of my bets this week. Well, I took a look. Rice was off a loss as a double-digit favorite. Maryland was off a loss as a double-digit favorite. They're on a bye this week. They play Northwestern next week. Colorado off a loss as a double-digit favorite. So I wanted to break it down by games. Look at the top chart. When you lose as a double-digit favorite early in the season, you have not done well. Games one, two, games two, three, four, and five, you're 46%. In the middle of the season, when you're into conference play, games six, seven, and eight, if you're off a loss as a double-digit favorite, those teams have gone 56.7%. But when you get to the end of the season, 40% record games 9, 10, 11, and 12 in the regular season. So I talked to a lot of people, and I know the general consensus is, wow, this team is off a loss as a double-digit favorite. They are due to bounce back. That has not been the case. Only 48.1% since 2016. That is kind of crazy. I think a lot of people do expect 
those teams to bounce back. Not sure if they will. I guess we'll have to find out on Saturday. Ralph, you have five trends, angles, or situations for us. Rapid fire. Let's hear them. Number one, I'm going to talk about that Rice team, which plays on Thursday, by the way, against Tulsa. Teams that lost as a double-digit favorite, like the chart showed, and are now either a pick em or a dog to plus 17. Make it minus one to plus 17. They could be a minus one-point favorite or a dog to 17. Those teams like Rice, only 38.4%. That says to fade Rice Thursday. System number two. A conference home dog of 10 or more that won a conference game the last day. Obviously, if you're a conference home dog of 10 points or higher, you're not a very good team. But you are off a win against the conference foe. This goes back since 2018. Let's see. Houston is a double-digit favorite to Texas. Stanford, a double-digit to UCLA. Those teams, only 38 and 78, 32.8%. So system two says to fade Houston and fade Stanford off their historic comeback win. System three, how do teams do that were outgained by 120 or more yards, but they won the game and now they're an away dog? Well, Pittsburgh got outgained significantly, but won last week. And Eastern Michigan was outgained significantly. They burned me because I was on the other side. But they won the game, and now they're both away dogs. Those teams, 26 and 50 against the spread since 2014. That is 34.2%. That says to fade Pittsburgh and fade Eastern Michigan. How about a team that is off a shutout win against an FBS foe? and now is a small favorite or a dog at home. Well, that applies to Navy. Navy is off a shutout win against an FBS opponent. They're at home, and they're a dog this week. Not a huge sample size since 2004. 20 wins and 9 losses. That is still 69%. That says to back the midshipmen this week. And finally, Kelly... When we get to the end of the year, there are hundreds, maybe there are thousands of tweets talking about Army and Navy and how they always go under. But did you know anytime there is a Commander and Chiefs game, that means Navy, Army, and Air Force playing Navy, Army, or Air Force, the service academies. If you blindly play the under in every game since 2006, you have won 40 times, lost 10. 80% to the under when the commander and chiefs teams play each other. And I've got one better. When they play each other and the line is seven and a half or higher, like it is this year, two overs and 20 unders. That, my friends, is 81% to the under. So we talk about Army and Navy under the total in December, but that does apply anytime. The service academies are playing for that commander-in-chief trophy. Good stuff, as always, from Ralph Michaels. Make sure you guys are giving him a follow at CalSportsLV. You can also go to his page to get his PDF for this week's college football TNA, wt.buzz backslash rm. We're going to take these uh, nerd glasses off because guess what? It's time to find some of those barking dogs for this week in college football. That sound, it can only mean one thing. That means we are looking for some outright underdog winners. No chihuahuas this week. Marco, give it to me. I need a touchdown underdog or higher. Well, Kelly, I'm bringing a big one for you this week. I caught the full touchdown. We got the seven-point underdog here. And we're going to be going against a team that's actually treated me pretty good this year. Uh, and I'm going against the Missouri Tigers. I'm going to take South Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina, you know, they shot themselves in the foot I don't know how many times last week. But I'm going to give them a chance to redeem themselves this week against Missouri because as much as I'm playing South Carolina in this one, Kelly, I'm going against Missouri, and here's why. Missouri goes from being the hunter to the hunted. They're a favorite for the first time in a month. They're also sporting that cute little number next to their name whenever you're looking at the scores scrolling on Saturday. 
and that is a top 25 ranking. Uh, that puts a bullseye on these teams, and I like South Carolina here to go into this spot. Missouri coming off a big win Saturday night uh, for me against Kentucky. That was one of my winners for my clients on Saturday, and they've been in several big games this year. Only one loss, and that one loss was that shootout with uh, LSU 49-39, which if you remember, I, I know Kelly does. I don't you have to bring up bad memories, but that was not a 10-point game. That was one of the ill-fated pick sixes in the last minute of the game that made it a 10-point game and uh, crushed the hopes and dreams of everybody holding a Missouri ticket. But now they're a favorite. It changes the role. I'm going to go with South Carolina here. Uh, South Carolina last week threw, ran for 167 yards and threw for 313 yards against Florida and somehow lost the game last week. Uh, we're going to get him on the bounce back mode. Uh, the old buy uh, low, sell high. Well, right now the market can't be any higher on Missouri, any lower on South Carolina. That makes the perfect storm. Give me South Carolina plus the full touchdown. I got him winning outright, Kelly. It'll be a boring burner, 37-34. Yeah, I agree with you on the over here, Marco, and I agree with you on the sell Missouri high. But after getting beamered last week, up 10, less than 10 minutes left, about 84 fourth down conversions for a guy named Graham Mertz. I don't know if I could stomach taking the Gamecocks here in Columbia. Joe, do you have a bigger dog than Marco? Well, I have uh, one that will eventually pay bigger. Uh, so what we're going to look at here is uh, we're going to go to South Florida, actually. Shocker, right down the road here, Cal. And I am going to look, and we haven't talked about it much, and they've kind of been flying under the radar, which is fantastic for us this week, as the FAU Owls will be taking on UTSA, who were at home uh, this week, taking on uh, UAB and Trent Delfer there and uh, boat raced them because UAB couldn't figure out what color uniforms they were wearing. So they just simply kept throwing the ball uh, to UTSA. Now, the reason that I love UTSA, uh, what FAU rather, is uh, one Tom Herman. I think we have forgotten just how profitable Coach Herman has been in his career in this spot, meaning as an underdog. In fact, uh, after last week as an underdog against South Florida, uh, guess what? In South Florida, rather, guess uh, guess how that worked out. Another FAU win in cover. He's now 20-5 and five in this spot here with his teams. FAU has had to go through some injuries this year. They have made the adjustments. We forget how good a coach Tom Herman is in getting these kids ready to play as a dog. Catching three, three and a half here at home against UTSA, which the last time they played back in 2020 didn't work out all so well for them there. Very similar type of team. I think it's going to work out well for them here. I think not only duh, do they cover the three, three and a half, but they're going to win this game outright. They are a live dog this week here. FAU and Tom Herman, book them, play them on the money line. They're winning this week. Yeah, I did a podcast last night, uh, Joe Ranieri, and I, I said that I thought that I agreed with you here. Unfortunately, I have not watched a UTSA game or a FAU <laughs> game outside of basketball all year long. So that might have just been the nudge I needed to get over to the window with the Owls. Marco, I'm going to need a couple more days to stomach uh, that South Carolina pick. I, I, I just have a really bad taste in my mouth after whatever oh, on Strauss, you know, a football game oh. that was uh, against the Florida Gators last Saturday. Sometimes, oh, you know, terrible. we just got to work through these things. This show's like therapy for me too, you guys, okay? Like we just got to, we got to talk through it, get past it and say, all right, we live to bet another day. Joe Ranieri, I'm going to kick it right back to you for, uh, well, a segment that is called Fade Joe Public, even though Joe Public has been cleaning up this year, not only in college football, but NFL. Yeah, well, they, they thought they were going to clean up last week because they kept betting Kentucky like they were going out of style, and that didn't work out uh, all that well either. And I got news for you. I don't think it's going to work out all that well this week uh, either because 
People are running to the window to back everyone's new favorite team, uh, the Rutgers. This Rutgers team now, apparently, who give them credit. I mean, ATS numbers, they have been an ATM this year. Uh, five and two on the season here. They have been crushing it. They've been covering numbers. And yet here we go. Now they're going on the road to Indiana. And what are they doing? Yeah, they're laying points here, people. Since they joined the Big Ten back in 2014, this will be the first time Rutgers finds himself as, guess what? A road favorite of more than a field goal in Big Ten. Yeah, now listen, Indiana, um, yeah, they were in the wrong weight class last week. They got Michigan absolutely destroyed them. They came off the bye. They made some adjustments with the O.C., and it just didn't where you can't turn the ball over five times to Michigan and give them short fields and expect things to go well. Having said that, this is much more in their weight class, a Rutgers offense that is absolutely putrid. How they managed to win that game against Michigan State last week, I'm still scratching my head as Michigan State might just have worse luck than Indiana has this week. I don't think that's the case. They got to go on the road in a very unfamiliar situation. Lane five? I'm not buying it. Yes, it's easy to look at Indiana and be like, oh, there's no way. Look at this team. Look at Rutgers. Uh, they're ATS monsters. They're five. Yeah, no. I do not trust Rutgers offensively. And they're going to have to score points on the road, which is something they have trouble doing. The defense can only do so much. Give me those five points. I'm back in the home dog in Indiana here in a very unfamiliar spot for the Rutgers Scarlet Knight football team. Joe, quick question. Could this also have doubled as a barking dog? Do you think they have a shot to pull off the outright home win? Playing one, playing the other. Taking the fives, I'm taking the money line. There's just That's the All only right. way to go. Not with my money, Ooh, Rutgers. They, they were on my long dog list, but another team. Man, I have not done well. I bet against Rutgers twice this year and have lost both times. Yeah. Marco, speaking of bet against spots, I text you in a team that I was looking to bet against, and I said, tell me this team is your sandwich. And you said, no, Kelly, unfortunately not. I've got a better sandwich, though. So who is this week's sandwich game of the week? Well, Kelly, you know what? I have no loyalty to teams I like, teams that cash for me. Last week, when you used Pitt as your best bet on the show, I told you I'd be joining you because it was a super spot for Pitt. Look at what they had last week. They were coming off their bye week. They had two weeks to prepare. They were switching quarterbacks, so they had two weeks to devise a game plan for him. And, oh, what else? It was homecoming. And what else? Louisville was coming off of beating Notre Dame the week before. It was the perfect storm. Now that perfect storm that everything was in the favor of Pitt now is all against them. They're coming off the big win against Louisville, and guess what? They go on the road this week. They play Wake Forest. So what? Wake mm -hmm. Forest has lost three in a row. You know, what are you going to get excited about that for? What they are going to get excited about is they're feeling all fat and sassy from smacking Louisville around last week, but they've got Notre Dame on deck. They're going to South Bend next week. That is a huge game for Pitt. They're going to get caught in the sandwich here. You can't get a better sandwich spot. And let's be honest. Let's go back and look at that Pitt game. You know, anytime we cash a ticket, that's fine. But if you go back and look and take off the rose-colored glasses, we were lucky in a lot of aspects of that game. Louisville, and that was part of the handicap. We expected sloppy play. You know, that's what happens when teams have letdowns or look past somebody. They turned the football over three times. We were plus three in the turnover department. That's something that you're going to win games. We know that when you're plus three. How about that quarterback change? Well, Pitt did throw for 200 yards last week, uh, but they only connected on 12 of 26. So was it really that much of an upgrade last week? And, oh, let's look at Wake Forest. Yeah, they got drilled by Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is just hot trash. They lost 30-13. to 13. How can I back them? Well, what have I told you so many times? When a team is a huge underdog and they have a near miss, they almost come up flat every single time the following week. And if you go back two weeks, look at Wake Forest. They were a 21-point underdog. 
They only lost 17 to 12 at Clemson. Then they had to go to Virginia Tech the following week. Mm -hmm. They were out as a pancake. It showed. You'll see a different Wake Forest team this week. I don't think Pitt has the offense to stay with them. Yes, Pitt has the better defense, but this is a pick em situation. We're not talking about laying a lot of points where I say always grab the points with the better defense. I'll take Wake Forest. They win this one. I've got them winning by a touchdown. Give me Wake Forest on Saturday as the sandwich game of the week. Uh, kind of a gross sandwich, but I think I can stomach it, Marco, after what Pitt was able to do for us last weekend. We're going to take a pivot. We're going to kick these guys out of here. Wrong arm. Got to go that way. That being said, it is time for some of that gold, and hopefully not this kind of gold, with VR. The comment section was mad at me last week, but it wasn't my fault. Blame the UFC. Either way, he is back this week. VR, Greek Gambler, Ace, all of the names. Johnny the Greek, at Greek underscore Gambler on Twitter, is back. Some of that gold. Ace, I'm taking the leash off. I'm going to let you run. Let's have it. I've got nothing but gold for you this week, Kelly. I got a ton of stuff in college football. And then, of course, obviously in NFL. Just want to make sure I throw in this caveat. It's Wednesday afternoon here in Las Vegas. Between now and kickoff on Saturday, there's a lot that goes on. A lot of money gets bet. A lot of manipulation that happened earlier in the week. You see a lot of comeback on the other side. So you need to use the information correctly. If you agree with it and you could get a good number, you fire. If you don't, sit back and don't just blindly piggyback because this is what my sheet looks like by the end of the week. This is like by Saturday when it's over, there's so much there, so much two-sided stuff. This is what it looks like today on Wednesday. Not as much. So please keep that in mind. My only goal for you is that you make money from the information, whether you follow fate or ignore it. But knowing that this is confirmed as short money on that side is very good, actionable information if you can use it correctly. So let's dive right in. College football, I'm just going to give you the sides and the totals quickly. No reason to dig into any handicap. You guys can do that part on your own. Let's start off. Wednesday night, it's two. Uh, these probably won't be up, but uh, in case they are, under in the New Mexico State and UTEP game, under in the game, under in the first quarter at 48 and a half for the game, under 10, uh, up to minus 130, actually, in the first quarter, if you can get it. And uh, as far as the side, I saw two way action, actually. So uh, we'll pass there. Then let's move on to Thursday primetime games. Marshall. Marshall's got bet as if they should have been the favorite. Um, Getting bet on the money line, getting bet, getting taken points, and also under at 51 for some steam as well. But the side is a lot stronger. I saw multiple groups get down on Marshall. And then we have Tulsa as well um, at minus two and a half in that second game. And then let's move on to Friday. This is a total under 54 and a half, SMU and Temple. We're going to move on to Saturday. Now, unfortunately, I have a William Hill sheet. Now I know why I don't can't bet there. They don't even have the listed numbers or like the, the rotation order. I think they do it by time, like the 9 o'clock games, 12 o'clock games. That's as square as it comes. I understand everything just from the sheet. So let's go on to Saturday. So we'll start off with Boston College, Georgia Tech, over 57 and a half. Mississippi State, Arkansas, under 48 and a half. Rutgers, Indiana, under 41 and a half. Sign, Charlotte, plus seven and a half. Charlotte, plus seven. Eastern Michigan, Northern Illinois, over 45. North Texas, Tulane, over 61 and a half. Move over to some sides here. Northwestern, plus 13 and a half. Northwestern, plus 13. Wake Forest on the money line and Wake Forest minus the two. So two sides on Wake Forest. Connecticut, plus the three, even paid some juice to get the plus three. And Tennessee Volunteers at plus nine. A handful of sides right there. All of them were multiple groups got down on those. And a couple totals for you. Under in that Pittsburgh Wake Forest game at 45. Missouri, South Carolina, excuse me, under 60. And then Washington State and Oregon over 61 and a half. A couple more sides and we're going to wrap it up for you. Illinois plus three, USC minus six, 
And finally, Arizona State plus 28. No surprise expecting the letdown from Washington after last week. And, you know, Arizona State has proven to give you 60 minutes of effort. So they took the 28 there. But uh, don't be surprised if it, uh, you see some square money pushing it back up and betting the favorite as well. I know Washington gets a lot of money at the window. Uh, that's going to do it for this week. Best of luck whether you follow Fade, like I said, or ignore this cash them, don't trash them. We're going to be back with NFL. we got some damage to do. We will be back with NFL. Make sure you guys check out the Bet On It NFL edition up on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. VR, I'm going to let you go because it is time. Some of those best bets. All right, it's time for those best bets. I went back and forth on this one, uh, whether I was going to go back to the well with Colorado State or take Mississippi State. This one opened seven, now six. So happy to have a little baby CLV trophy. But I do think this is a money line play, and they will make my parlay. We got Mississippi State coming off a bye. And, well, you could maybe even make an argument that they had a bye the previous week when they got to play Western Michigan. Don't you love how the SEC does that? We just scatter in random teams throughout the season to kind of give your uh, offense a chance to kind of work through some things. But I don't think they really did. Now they've got an SEC gauntlet that they have to go through. And you've got the Arkansas Razorbacks who have went through a gauntlet of their own. A really just smash mouth rough set of losses from this team including one last week at Alabama. Well, if you didn't watch that Alabama game just like I didn't, you'd think, hey, wow, Arkansas put up a dogfight. 24-21 in Tuscaloosa final. But that's not really the case. It was 24-6 late Arkansas got gained by 165 yards, and the Crimson Tide defense held the Razorbacks to just 13 first downs. This is Arkansas's eighth straight week with a game. Man, LSU, A&M, Ole Miss, Alabama. You got a feel for this team. I don't feel that bad for them. I'm going to take Mississippi State plus the six, and not to forget to sprinkle a little bit on that money line. Let's see if those cowbells are not ringing in Fayetteville. Marco D'Angelo, your best bet for college football week eight. Well, Kelly, we've been doing very well with these best bets in college football. Let's keep it going. And we're going to go to Air Force and we're going to lay the points. And I know you're going to say, what? You're laying points in a service academy game? Aren't the, all these games finished like 13 to 10 or something? No, let's stop for a second. Yeah, the Army Navy. Yeah, we know about that series and how low scoring and how they fight. But Air Force right now, especially this year, is on a different level than the other two service academies. And Navy has had some success this year when they snuck up on some teams and covered some big numbers. Why? Well, because most teams don't know how to defend the option. They don't see it that often. And whenever you got to prepare for it in one week, in one of the games this year, Navy played Memphis. They played them on a Thursday night. The team only had four days to prepare for it. And I know you're going to say, yeah, but they play them in conference every year. They should be familiar with uh, that. Yeah. How many of these kids are around every year anymore with the transfer portal? Uh, and they're going to learn uh, to handle the option in a four or five day period. No, not going to happen. Air Force. Yeah, they know how to handle the option. They see it every day in practice. Only they see a better version of it. Air Force is going to score in this game. I am not sold on this Navy defense, and Air Force will have success. I like this Air Force defense as well. I think they slow Navy down. And what's going to happen? Yeah, they're going to keep running the football. But how many times have I told you, whenever you're trying to kill clock, and you're trying to kill clock doing what you do best, that's an advantage because you can – add to the lead. And that's what I see happening here. I like Air Force. They have scored 34 or more points in every game but one. This is going to be easy, I think, for Air Force. I'm laying the 10 and a half. I've got them winning 34-13. Give me the Air Force. I'm laying the points for this week's best bet. Taking that high octane Air Force offense for Marco D'Angelo and laying the double digits. Joe Ranieri, give me your best bet. So, uh, Cal, I'm going to go to the SEC, and uh, I think we're getting 
a lot of value here with this number under a touchdown. I'm going to go with Old Miss on the road, taking on an Auburn team that can't score any points. In fact, the biggest issue with Auburn, while they are a nice defensive team outside of last week when they got absolutely crushed, they still haven't scored more than 20 points in any conference game thus far. They're already 0-3 on the season. They lost at A&M. They lost to Georgia. They got crushed by LSU. The problem with this Tigers team, when they play quality, much like LSU, when they play really good offensive teams, is that the game eventually gets away from them because they're not built to come from behind. And in the meantime, you got an Ole Miss team with uh, coming off a uh, a bye week here. Now, they're not great defensively, but all that means to me is that it's just going to take them a little bit longer to be able to separate themselves from this Auburn team, and they are going to clear and win this game by more than a touchdown here. You're talking about a team that averages 306 yards per game in the air with a 14-2 to two touchdown to INT ratio. I don't see how Auburn has enough offense to keep up. They're going to get desperate. They're going to make mistakes as this game gets later on in the second half, which is going to lead to easier points here for an old miss. I've got them dropping at least 40. I don't see Auburn scoring more than 21. Give me old miss. Lay the six and a half on the road. They will get it done. Thank goodness that was one mistake I didn't make last week was uh, getting baited into betting the Auburn Tigers inept mm. offense. Joe, I hope for you, you are right. I I cannot take the points with Auburn there at home in Hugh Freeze's Super Bowl. Ed, well, that's just what it is. And this is the end of the show. So let's throw up that recap graphic so I can say our goodbyes. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's show from me, Joe, Marco, Ralph. Good luck. Let's cash some tickets. And until next week, let's bet on it.